let's go over some intelligent settings for your civil 3D environment. One of the most important things to know is that you do need to create an Autodesk account and be logged into that account. That way, as you uh, manipulate the settings for your workspace or for your environment, they're saved somewhere. They stay there and the next time you log into Civil 3D, your settings will be the same. So that's a really important step and I would definitely recommend getting that uh, set up first of all. Now when I'm talking about settings that are saved every time you come back into the drawing, I'm talking about settings or changes to your workspace or the environment itself, not drawing settings. Drawing settings are controlled by drawing templates, and we'll discuss that in a future training. One setting that I think is really helpful in regards to our command line is having at least four lines of data visible in the list. You can hit uh, F2, and the list above your command line will be shown in a little bit more detail in a larger box. If any of the data that you need to see there doesn't quite fit in these lines, you can go ahead and hit F2. If you like this feature better, then you can display less lines in your list. I like to just have the information here so that I don't have to uh, perform the extra keystroke of going back and forth uh, from the F2 dialog. As an example of what I'm talking about with the list, if I were to draw a line and then perform a distance inquiry on that line from one end to the other, the information for that line is repeated to me and you can see that it gave me my feedback using a couple lines of data. And I always want to get as much info as I can. So again, that's why I like multiple lines in my list. Okay, let's go ahead and type in the word options. And we're going to go through these tabs one at a time and make some permanent changes to our settings again, so long as we're logged in. First, we're gonna to go to the open and save tab, and then we're gonna go back to the start. Um, what I want to talk about on this tab is your automatic save. So you definitely want automatic save to be clicked. And I like to set it at five minutes in between saves. Of course, when you're working with an, any individual drawing, it's saved in whatever location that drawing is found on your computer or on the server. And every time you hit the save button, um, a new version or rather that, you know, that file itself is updated in that location. In between the instances in which you hit save, um, by turning on this automatic save feature, AutoCAD will actually, every five minutes, just go ahead and save a backup for you, which is really helpful if you were to experience a crash or something else. Um, that backup will always be as good as at least um, the last five minutes of your work. In fact, if it performed an auto save 30 seconds before you experienced a crash, then that backup would be 30 seconds old and so on. Okay, let's go back to the file tab. We're only gonna go over a couple of settings in the file tab. The first one is the automatic save file location. So we just set our automatic save um, on the open and save tab. Now let's pick a location for that file. I like to typically set up something um, local on my C drive so that I know exactly where it is and where my backups are. I've created an autosave folder on my C drive and all of my backups go there so when I've experienced a crash, I don't have to hop onto a server or get into any complicated location. I can go straight to my autosave folder. I know where it is and that it's going to be up to date within the last five minutes. Um, the other one we're going to work with is our template settings. I talked about settings for your environment being saved under your profile in AutoCAD, but if you have made changes to the way your drawing itself looks and feels, if you've created borders or other settings in your settings tab in the tool space, those things will be saved in your drawing template. And we'll talk about how to create a template in a future training. In your template settings, uh, you want to set a template file location. Um, that's the folder where your templates live in general, maybe one template. If you've only got one, maybe several templates. Then you also want to set a default template file name for new drawings. Um, so in this case, I've picked my uh, 11 by 17 exhibit template by selecting it and hitting OK. That means um, that if I were to 
apply and close. Anytime I hit this plus button to start a new drawing, it's going to go ahead and start a drawing using that predetermined template. So any settings um, for the look and feel behavior of the drawing itself will be saved. Any border that's uh, contained in that template um, will preload itself into any new drawing that I create when I hit the new drawing or cue new button. Let's go to the display tab. One of the first things that I change on the display tab is my crosshair size. Usually set that all the way to the right at 100 so that my crosshair takes up the entire workspace environment. When I'm working in something that has a lot of lines vertically and horizontally, um, it becomes hard to track small crosshairs. And so crosshairs that extend over the entire workspace are really easy to pick up and track. In my layout elements, I will turn off my display paper background, and that turns off display paper shadow. On my paper space or layout tab, I have a border. Um, I can clearly see where the extents of that border are, and when I print this, I'm gonna pick the size of the piece of paper. Um, if I have this display paper background and display paper shadow turned on, when you go to your layout tab, um, it's going to have a gray background. You'll see a graphical representation of the, the piece of paper itself with a drop shadow. The problem with that is until you have printed something, it's typically the wrong size piece of paper. It's not centered on your border itself, so it can be a little bit confusing. I already know what size my piece of paper is, and when I print it, if there's anything else that I need to change, I'll determine it at that time. So I don't need that constant graphical representation. And again, typically it's in the wrong spot and confusing. So I always turn that off. Something else that I will do is go to the colors button. Um, that's in your windows elements, colors. Right here, um, you can control the way your model space and paper space um, look and feel. We talked about turning off the display paper background. One of the positive things that that paper background would have done for you is remind you that you were operating in paper space. But another thing that you can do, so here I am in my 2D model space, here I am in my sheet layout, is just change the color of your background in paper space so that it appears different from model space. So when I see this blue background, I know I'm in paper space. When I see the black background, I know I'm in model space. And it helps me know when I'm, I'm operating between those two things. So here's the context. This is the particular elements. So the context is 2D model space. My element is the background. The color of that background is determined here. Now the context is my layout. The element is my background. And here's the color um, that I've picked for that background uh, to visualize. I can also change the color of the crosshairs any other element that I want in either of those environments. I'll apply and close. We already worked with open and save. The next one that I'm going to go to is user preferences. And I'm going to be focusing on in the Windows standard behavior, right click customization, double click editing is turned off, shortcut menus and drawing areas is turned on. And under right click customization, Time-sensitive right-click is turned off. If no objects are selected, right-click means repeat last command. If one or more objects are selected, right-click means shortcut menu. If a command is in progress, right-click means enter. Um, these settings will save you a lot of keystrokes uh, as far as going back and forth to your keyboard. Instead, you can just right-click. Apply and close. That's it for the options that we're going to modify right now. Apply and OK. Another setting to be aware of is your units. Type in the word units. And you can see that I am in decimal. My precision is set to three decimal places. And I'm working in feet. All these units control is how units are displayed to you in the drawing. So I've got a coordinate readout here. You can see it's showing to three decimal places. It's in feet. In my properties dialog box, um, I'm getting three decimal places in feet. So I'm just controlling the way information is presented to me. When I do labeling or when I export point data, etc., cetera, um, there's another set of overrides that control all of these things. Um, this units 
dialogue is how things are displayed from an information standpoint in the AutoCAD environment. It doesn't control objects such as a label. Another intelligent setting that you might wish to manipulate is your zoom factor. So type in the word zoom factor, enter. You can see my zoom factor is set at 60. That controls how fast I scroll in and out. You might want to be able to roll out faster or maybe you feel like it moves too quickly. Um, you can slow that down. If you want to change this value, I recommend um, starting with increments of 10, like try 50 or 70. That way you're not doing anything too drastic and you can see uh, just how much change is introduced by those small increments. We can also change the way our middle button operates by typing in M button pan. So that's middle button pan, enter. And you're gonna to wanna to set that to zero. So uh, typically, or out of the box, the middle button, when you hold it down, um, pans around, left down, upright in the drawing. If you set the value to zero, it disables that function. When the middle button pan is disabled and you hit the middle button, it brings up your snap menu. We'll talk more about your snap menu later, but this saves tons of keystrokes throughout the life of a task or drawing. And allows you to uh, perform precision work quickly. You should get used to using your zoom as the way that you navigate around a drawing instead of pan because again it saves time and it saves keystrokes. Um, so just as a, a quick tutorial on how that works, where your cursor is pointed is where you will zoom in and it will also be the center point from which you zoom out. So if I wanted to see the right end of this line and I go over to the right end and zoom out, see how it's centrally zoomed from that point and I never actually got to see the right end of that line. Um, so I recommend that when you're zooming out, you bring your cursor back to the middle of the screen, zoom out, and then move your cursor to the object that you want to zoom in on and roll in. Rolling the wheel up zooms in, return to the middle to roll the wheel out. Rolling the wheel up brings it inward for a zoom in, rolling the wheel down zooms out. Thanks for visiting Lean Survey. There are plenty more best practice, quick tricks, and tip videos on the way. Be sure to like, leave a comment if you have recommendations for content, and click that subscribe button for more.